Hey, what's going on guys? Huddled here, and today I'm going to be going over the settings that I use in AimLab. This has been a long time requested video ever since I started playing AimLab, um, because the default settings in this game, I'm going to be honest, I'm not a big fan of them. And so, honestly, the first thing you're going to want to do, just set up the game like you normally would. You're going to want to use the settings based on the game that you main. Um, but once you actually get into the game, I would suggest going into the audio settings as the default hit sound. I'm definitely not a big fan of, you guys probably know that loud metal hit sound. Um, I don't know if it'll play it for me right here. You can hear it. It is quite loud. Um, my personal favorites are water drop, AB shot, and kick deep. I will be leaving a link in the description as to where you can download all of these sounds that I'm using. Um, but it's really easy to go ahead and change the sounds. I will be making a separate video on a sound pack as well here fairly soon. Right now I'm using the sound from Aim Booster, and it's just a nice little pop sound. It's really easy to go ahead and import it. You just go to your documents and then, um, you know, wherever you save the sound files, and then you can just import them from here. So I just copied over my sound pack, and I just import all the sounds. And once you go ahead and do that, um, it's pretty much all you need to change for the audio settings. I turn off the music volume because I don't really like listening to, you know, AimLab music when I could just be playing my own music in the background. And I also turn off the fire sound. Uh, I prefer just to have a hit sound for audio feedback rather than, you know, shooting the gun just because I want to know that when it does play a sound, I did hit the target. At least that's always been my theory on it. And so um, another thing you're going to want to go ahead and do is make sure you're on full screen exclusive and that you are playing at the highest refresh rate. I am on a 360 hertz monitor, so I have it at 360 hertz. And for the max queued frames, you're going to want to go ahead and set it on low latency. And for frame rate limiter, uh, you could turn this off. Personally, I've had bad performance when I uh, don't run the frame limiter. It just made my graphics card go at 100% usage and it just did not run very well at all. Um, so I went ahead and capped my frames at 500. As long as it's above the refresh rate of your monitor, you should be fine. I said at 500 because in some cases in the Creator Studio it was dropping below what I had it set to. So I wanted to set it to something that it could reach fairly consistently. And so another thing you're going to want to go ahead and do, um, turn off all of the FX. Personally, I don't really like having any of the FX play. Um, player damage doesn't really matter just because you have visual feedback when you're hit, but in most scenarios you aren't actually fighting another bot, so it won't really affect anything. Um, for graphics quality, I just use fast, you know, I turn everything off just for the highest uh, frame rate and best performance. As far as the actual game settings, right now I have it set at Valorant. Um, I don't know why I didn't save, but these are the settings that I use for scenarios like Grid Shot and Tile Frenzy around like 30 cm. But when I actually want to play um, my normal settings, I do use around 50 to about 50 to 40 centimeters per 360. So 103 field of view and 0.31 sensitivity, which is about 52 centimeters per 360. And ADS settings don't matter as I don't use that at all. Um, make sure, uh, this is just like controller stuff, does not really matter what you use down here. Um, but yeah, you're just gonna wanna go ahead and have it set up for the game that you play. Um, this is all, you know, you don't have to copy my settings for this. This is basically just your preference. And for the crosshair, here's another thing a lot of people don't know is that you can actually upload your own crosshair. Now you can go ahead and use the default, you know, crosshair creator. But what I find easier is if you just upload an image of a crosshair, you same thing as it is for importing sounds. Just go to my documents, go to crosshair. And you can just import any of the crosshairs that you already have from other games. Um, I will be leaving a, I don't know why I did that. I'll be leaving a link to my Discord in the description where I do post the crosshairs that I use. This is the Mad Badman crosshair, um, but it's a bit different. Uh, but yeah, I'll leave a link in the description below as to where you can import this crosshair. And for the game settings, here's another big game changer. The countdown duration. So, you know, a lot of people like used to rag on AimLab for having that five second countdown when you started each scenario, you know, it really made it annoying when you're trying to grind for a high score when you couldn't easily quickly reset the mode. And so you can go ahead and set that to zero and you won't have to wait any time at all when you start a scenario. Sometimes I do like to set it at one just to give a buffer as the game does tend to freeze for a quick second once you go ahead and start it. But um, I don't know, it's personal preference. Um, but yeah, it's a definitely a nice touch. 
um, player avatar doesn't matter it's like different models player appearance again doesn't matter um, as for target color I like to just do custom RGB so I can adjust it on the fly for stuff like you know grid shot and whatnot I do like to use the yellow targets with a darker background yellow or white um, but right now I just have it set to yellow and when in playing something you know on the workshop like jumbo tile frenzy something that has like a white background as you can't adjust the color of the background texture as you can in like other aim trainers easily in this game so i just adjust the color of the bot target instead the rest of the stuff doesn't really matter and yeah as for key bindings the only thing i went ahead and did was i unbinded ADS as I don't use it for anything and just accidentally pressing right click while I grip my mouse was a bit annoying. And one last thing that I'm going to show you guys is you can actually go ahead and change the background color of the default, you know, map right here. If you just go ahead and go to custom, go to custom gray box and you can go ahead and change the background color when you're playing scenarios like grid shot or six shot the really popular ones that feature the gray box map there's a lot of settings you can change here you can set it to single color personally i just set to single color solid color but you can add textures to it if you want um there's some crazy looking ones you can get like <laughs> just look at that or you can make it like furry i have no idea why you'd want to do that but the option is always there I just like the nice solid color and yeah that's pretty much um, all of the settings that you really need to change in aim lab and once you go ahead and do that you'll be all set up and ready to go uh, these are the settings that I recommend uh, if you guys like this video be sure to leave a like and a comment down below I will be streaming more aim lab this week on my twitch channel so if you guys want to watch me grind for high scores you can go ahead and check my twitch channel I want to go for 150,000 on grid shot after watching people like Draco play. My current best was actually quite a while ago. I have like 140,000, but I need to get back on the grind for speed clicking. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. This is Huddled signing out.